You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Ruth is from Moab, but Boaz is from Bethlehem. In recent posts about Ruth, we've looked at the use of direct speech, and at the question of whether Ruth arriving at Boaz Field was blind chance or providence. In this podcast, I'd like to look a bit closer at how Ruth and Boaz interact in Chapter 2. You see, the traditional reading with a humble and grateful Ruth, who rather mousily thanks and admires the great man, doesn't ring true to me somehow. And then I came across a reading by a Swiss Arabist, Capon di Capona, in a book which he didn't complete because he died, that suggests that we think about the cultures involved. You see, there's a culture clash between Ruth and Boaz, as well as an age gap. Boaz is a Bethlehemite peasant, a rich peasant, but still a peasant farmer, and peasant culture is rigidly stratified, and everyone knows their place, and roles and responsibilities are clearly defined, and everyone knows their place. Ruth is from Moab, and Moabites were semi-nomads. Semi-nomadic society is very different. There's far less clear division of labour, and roles and responsibilities are often confused or changing, and hierarchies are much less rigid. So now take Ruth, the Moabite semi-nomad, and place her in provincial Bethlehem. Put her in the field with Boaz, a local notable, and see how the two of them interact. And this is where it starts to get interesting. Boaz, the notable peasant fuddy-duddy, and if you want to know why I characterize him that way, see my previous post, says to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one. But keep close to my young women. Keep your eyes on the field that's being reaped, and follow behind them. I've ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessels, and drink from what the young men have drawn. Then, verse 10, she fell prostrate, with her face to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favour in your sight, that you should take notice of me when I'm a foreigner? Now, how do you read that? You see, already I read it with a somewhat stroppy and abrasive Ruth. But the traditional reading has Ruth the ever so humble. She falls prostrate with her face to the ground and says to him, Why have I found favour in your sight, that you should take notice of me when I'm a foreigner? Hmm. The text goes on. Verse 11. Boaz answers her. All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land, and came to a people that you did not know before. May the Lord reward you for your deeds, and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Ruth replies in verse 13, May I continue to find favour in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant even though I'm not one of your servants. Again, how do you read it? I read it as Ruth being slightly stroppy. I'm not actually one of your servants. I'm not part of your household. I'm not a dependent. But is she saying that, or is she saying, I'm not even worthy to be your servant, rather like the prodigal son in Jesus' parable? How do you read Ruth? Is Capone di Capone right? in his reading of semi-nomadic and somewhat feisty Ruth? Or is most European tradition right to read Ruth as the ever-so-humble? That's the fun of biblical narrative. I don't know, and neither do you, but we both have our opinions. Test your opinion out. Try it both ways, and see which reading convinces you the most. Especially when you try to imagine the social and cultural overtones and background to the story. You see, 
reading carefully really does enrich our understanding of biblical narrative <coughs> till next time then god bless <laughs>